We could show you the highlights, but there, there weren't really any. Well, the highlight was, uh, and actually, both teams, neither team played badly, right? It was Wolves away from home, counter-attacking, well-organised team, as we know. And United, you know, low in numbers, low in energy, lacking quality in the final third, because they had lots of possession. But I suppose for United fans, they got a glimpse of Bruno Fernandes, who started the game, needs to get up to speed and, and integrate properly. Clearly, he's going to be a good player. Uh, but for 65% or so possession, United, they just didn't have enough guile in the final third. And Wolves were always a threat going forward, particularly with Raul Jimenez. Yeah, but I, you're right. The only talking point here is that Bruno Fernandes starts. But I, I think the bigger two, certainly from a Manchester United perspective, is that I thought they equipped themselves well. A few weeks ago, you asked who would finish top four. And I thought Wolves would kind of leapfrog everybody else and get in there. And, but you look at this performance where I thought... They drew no nil shot. Yeah, but I, listen, I'm, I'm looking for a silver lining here for United. I, mm. I thought they equipped themselves well against who, before now, I thought was certainly in the top four teams in, in, in the league. That's about as good as it can get for United, especially when you consider injuries and the suspension to, to Matic. It's what Lampard has been saying for a few weeks now, and I think maybe peeved a little bit about the... the the lack of any action in the transfer window, mm -hmm. uh, which I think has is, is made him smarting a little bit, uh, is that good possession, some nice football, particularly early on, and no end product again. I mean, young Rhys James put a couple of wonderful balls in, one in particular to Tammy Abraham, and we think he goes with the wrong he goes leg. With the wrong he? leg, yeah. I, I mean, it, it was odd because he goes with the, with the right. I thought maybe he's protecting his bad ankle, but. If memory serves me correctly, it was his right that he had hit against Arsenal. So it, it made no sense for a player that I think very highly of. I, it was a poor decision from from Tammy Abrams. Some of so, uh, some of Chelsea's football in the first half I thought was was very good, but in the end you, you take that point because Leicester really were the better of the two and should have should have won it. They're Jekyll and Hyde, aren't they, Chelsea? Because right, yeah. because you know when they're playing well in games they look as if they're a million dollars. Mm. You know they knock it around. It's into Jorginho and it's. You know, they get it wide, they get the full-backs forward, they get mounted in good positions. And then when, when the opposition, whoever it is, and I've seen it at Stamford Bridge this season, whenever the opposition get a foothold in the game, they panic. And they just sort of lose their shape and, and sort of lose any sort of discipline. And that was kind of like that again today. Listen, I don't know what kind of discussion Frank Lampard had with, with, with Kepa about the situation, about, about his own performances. But from the outside looking in, I, I'm not sure how this makes him better. How, I'm not sure how this improves him as, as, as a goalkeeper. Being left out in a game of this magnitude with the spotlight quite clearly on you. Now, that's something that Frank Lampard is, is, is going to have to manage because I, I, I don't see how you finish the season with Willy Caballero in goal and still finish top four. No, you don't four. because, you, you, you know, you're, you're risking the top four. Yeah. The only thing I can think of to, to, to try and paint a picture is he's seen things from Kepa out with the, the playing 90 minutes that he doesn't like. Right. Maybe an attitude issue. Maybe he spoke to Kepa about something else and he didn't like the player's reaction. And he's thought, well, OK, I'm going to leave you out. Now, that's just down to, to management then. That's his decision. But if he is making a decision like this, he has to be mindful that the recent inconsistencies have brought the chasing pack back into But, but here's the thing. You have, a, you have a fragile, well, what may be a fragile dressing room given some of the inconsistencies you've seen from them. Over, over, the, over the last month and a half. But now you're complaining about the transfer window where you haven't strengthened the squad and you fire broadside at your goalkeeper. How does that play out in the dressing room between now and the end of the season when these are the players you're going to have to rely on? Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.